three, two, one. All right, y'all. Another old school Sunday conversations. We've been having massive technical difficulties. So I'm thanking God for my my uh, my my esteemed guests being so patient with me today. Um, it's another old school Sunday conversations. As you know, I uh, bring in some of the great people in my network, and I consider this young lady to be one of those great people in my network that um, are doing amazing things out in the world. And uh, we go back um, again from Facebook friends to um, Mumford High School friends to We Did It For Let friends. And I want to just um, bring her in here to talk about the amazing things she's doing in the cigar world. Um, I know a lot of times when people think of cigars, uh, they think of you know, maybe a guy having one of those big stogies. And I I got some cigars here in my box, Mo. I want you to help me go through them and see if, see if I'm in the right place or not. Um, and as I was saying before, we had got cut off on the last recording. As I'm dealing with these technical difficulties, um, on my, uh, I want to say, 45th birthday, my wife took me to a cigar bar here in uh, North Carolina. Um, you know, we had some cigars. And... This room that I'm in right now, I call it my, my my smoke room, or initially called it the smoke room, but I had the, the nine and the eight-year-old, or seven soon to be eight-year-old, but we call it the chill room, but um, this room that I'm in, I, I initially fell in love with this room because it has that aura in my mind of what a great um, cigar room would be like. So um, I will let you introduce yourself, and then I want to ask you a few questions about the cigar world and um, see if you can educate me and educate all those that turn into old school Sunday conversations. Well, good to see Absolutely. you, Mo. Good to see you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, it's It's been a long time, man. You just did the flashback with the Mumford and the uh, Dorothy Follette. That, yeah, that was some years ago. Um, so thanks again for having me. My name is Monique Henderson. Everybody calls me Mo. And um, my life has, since high school, you know, God has gone in several different directions. And uh, where it has landed as of late, I'd say as of the past five years, is, as you've mentioned, in the cigar world. So uh, back in 2017, I started Cigarden, which is a mobile cigar service. Um, and actually, I, I started the business. It wasn't named Cigarden initially, but I started with the intention of um, bringing women together uh, to learn about cigars and cigar smoking. I myself have been smoking for probably about 20 years now. Um, didn't get into it like serious, serious the way that I am now um, until about probably six or seven years ago. Um, so, yeah, so I started off doing a cigar women's 101 event. My background is also event planning. So I was able to kind of take the skill set that I have from uh, creating experiences for people via events and tie that in with cigars. And so we started doing uh, those events and then it morphed into Cigarden, which is in a nutshell, um, I call, our, uh, call me a, a cigar caterer. So people hire us to come to their weddings, divorce parties, um, the baby showers, um, golf outings, all types of events, you name it, we've done them. Okay. Um, and we essentially bring cigars to the party. Um, the niche that we have or niche that we have is just the experience and how we do what I do. And I keep saying we because I have a team of nine other people that um, help me do what I do. And so okay. over the I don't even you know, I've not totaled up how many events we've done over the past five years, but we did celebrate five years last year. Um, I'd be willing to say it's, it's easily in the hundreds. We've done quite a few events. Um, but this past April, I had the opportunity to open my own brick and mortar cigar shop. And uh, it's called Shade nice. Cigar Cafe. It's probably backwards on the screen, but um, we are a cigar and coffee shop. Oh, I see you. I see you. Yeah. And so um, okay. we, we, it's not a smoke in venue because I wanted to create something where non cigar smokers felt comfortable to come in, jump on the Wi-Fi, um, you know, grab some coffee. Uh, we're lucky in that they can bring their own bottle in. So if they want to bring in, you know, a bottle of wine or whatever it is that they're sipping, 
they can do that here. And we got games. So if they want to, you know, break out a game of dominoes or spades or whatever, all of that's here. And then for those that do like to smoke, we do have a heated tent out in the back so they can go out and smoke and uh, enjoy their cigars back there. But other than that, we offer a wide variety of cigars. And I, I'm able to take all the things that we do with the mobile service and put it here in the brick and mortar and do that day to day. So we get customers that, you know, come in that have no clue about cigars. And so we're able to to share information with them and educate them. Um, and then we also, of course, got to sprinkle the events in this. We do a number of really, really cool events, both here at the shop, as well as I'm involved in a number of other events outside of the shop, such as Smoke on the River, which is Detroit's first cigar festival. And it's absolutely amazing. Nice. Um, yeah, and uh, we also have the Detroit Cigar Cruise, where I've partnered with a couple of other cigar retailers and we put on a cruise every year. Um, and then, of course, I had to stick with educating the ladies. So I still do that women's event. It's now branded Girl Chat. And last year we had about 100 women that attended the event. So it was about sisterhood, cigars and fellowship and all of that. And it was just a, an amazing event. So in a nutshell, that's what I'm doing out here. I'm, I'm blessed to be able to work in the industry that I love. I'm passionate about cigars. I love the history of cigars. So uh, to be able to to do what I do and love it and also make money is definitely a blessing. Uh, no doubt, no doubt. And I'm, I'm happy to hear that for you. And, um, you know, I guess my first introduction maybe to some cigars, I'm telling on myself a, a little bit, would be those Swiss of sweets, but they wouldn't even smoke them. They cut them and take the tobacco out of them. And they still do. <laughs> they Trust me. <laughs> That's where a lot of people got started. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, but you know, talking about the ladies and, and introducing them and educating them to um the cigars, and you're talking about the brick and mortar, and maybe some people, you know, not feeling comfortable coming into the space, or maybe um I'm thinking about my grandfather now, um, him him trying to run us away from cigars, letting us get the taste, and everybody like, oh no, that's nasty. Uh yeah. and you know, I was telling my wife about interviewing you and trying to think of some questions of, you know, what she would have as a question about cigars. And, and one of the ones that came up was, um, you know, do you think for those who, you know, may not be used to the taste or trying to get an acquired taste for cigars and want to try it, but very fearful of what that taste, that first taste may be like, um, do you think that they'll ever come up with a plastic tip where you don't get so much of the cigar taste in your mouth? Um, or are there different flavors that you would suggest for a first timer that's just trying to try their first cigar? Yeah, well, actually, so they do. As a matter of fact, I might have it here. They do make um, really cute filters. I haven't used this thing in a while, but this is a really okay. nice. This is, it's actually wooden, and you stick nice. the cigar right in there. So, um, okay. so that those things are out there for sure. Um, but right. and and they have a myriad of um, flavored cigars. So the big thing with okay. the flavored cigars, most of your more seasoned cigar smokers or cigar snobs or men, <laughs> okay. you know, okay. tend to poo-poo the flavored cigars and, you know, what they say, oh, those aren't real cigars, which is absolutely not true. Um, they they okay. contain tobacco, just like the regular non-flavored cigar. Uh, it's just that they've gone through a different process in order for them to incorporate that flavor. So, and actually, whenever I get a newbie smoker, what I call a newbie, um, mm -hmm. that's where I tell them to start because yes, a, a regular non flavored cigar is an acquired taste. Um, okay. and, and my big thing is I want people to be able to fully experience, um, and, and be patient and give the experience, you know, uh, the time so that they can fully appreciate the cigar because smoking a cigar right. is like none other. It's just, it's an awesome thing. It's very relaxing. Yes. Who you meet that just the whole culture of it is great so i always try to start them off with a flavored cigar because i don't want them to be deterred so um i can tell you here at my shop um and just my experience of doing this for for a number of years um there are several flavors that are very popular one of which that's coming to mind right now is a brand called tatiana uh and the the name of the okay. specific cigar is called groovy blue so groovy blue is like a fruity taste um, and, and the way that I describe it when I'm, you know, introducing it to somebody, I tell them what's in it. So the flavor is acai berry, honey and vanilla, mm. and it's infused with cognac. 
by the time I get to that cognac, they sold. They're like, right. ah, really? exactly. And you then once they smell like. it, right? Exactly. Okay. It's, it's it's an awesome stick. So, but I mean, there again, there's a number of flavored cigars that are out there that I would recommend. Um, that yeah, a newbie smoker start off with that and then work their way up. And what I typically find is that those people that are seriously um, wanting to learn about cigars they will um, start to progress on their own. So they'll progress from that flavored nice. cigar to a mild non-flavored cigar. And then they start working their way up as their palate becomes more and more developed. Okay, good deal. Now, if you was putting a gift together for somebody that said they were interested in cigars and they're looking to get into cigars, what would maybe your top five cigars be for a starter kit or maybe oh, top three question. cigars? Um, so I would definitely go with probably a, a Romeo Julieta, uh, Julieta. Okay. Um, they came out, I think it was about probably two years ago now with their Nicaraguan, which is a blue label. Most of the time when you see Romeo Julieta there, um, it's like a red label. So you'll know the one I'm talking about is the whole label is blue and it's a Nicaraguan, okay. which to me, Nicaraguan tobacco tends to be smoother. Um, so I really enjoy that stick. It's a nice medium smoke. So it's not too strong. It's not too mild. Um, I tend to, again, if somebody's asking me, hey, because we do gift boxes as well, and if they don't know what right. the person smokes, I tend to go right down the media, the middle because I'd hate to give a person that smokes strong cigars something that's too mild and someone that smokes right. mild something that's too strong. So I definitely go with that. Um, right now, I'm really, really feeling the Rocky Patel Disciple, um, okay. which is a great stick. Uh, darker Rocky in Patel. shade, uh, a little bit stronger, but really, really good. Um, what else am I smoking right now? Um, Eroa 20th anniversary, which is a great stick. Okay. Um, again, on that darker side. And the reason I'm calling out the, the darker shade part is because most people, you know, will look at a darker shade. And they might get intimidated thinking it's too strong. Um, but not all dark cigars mean that it's strong. But that Eroa is great. It has notes of like cocoa in it. Um, it's just a really, mm. really good smoke. So it's nice and smooth. So those would probably be the three, but my palate, I mean, I try to pick up something different every time I smoke. So right before we got on this call, I was out right. in a tent smoking a um, a Cuban, a Trinidad Cuban. Um, and it was wow, really hard for me to put it down good. to come get on this call, but I'm going to jump right back on it as soon as we get off. <laughs> I appreciate but, uh, you. <laughs> but, okay. um, so yeah, I try to smoke something different every time if I can. Okay. And, and I, I like how you, um, kind of educating us on those different flavors. What would be your, your favorite um, alcohol-infused cigar? Uh, alcohol-infused? So yeah. I think one of, in my opinion, one of the best ones out on the market is the Macanudo bourbon-infused. Um, okay. I like it because it's not too sweet. I don't like them too, too sweet. I've, I've gotten... You know, for me, I've gotten past this, you know, the I still smoke from time to time a flavored cigar. Don't get me wrong. But um, as okay. you, what a person will learn is as your palate develops over time, you start just really not having a taste for that flavor, which is probably why a lot of the cigar snobs are like, ah, you know, when it comes to flavor, because they're just they're kind of passing right. over it. But that bourbon Macanudo is pretty good. Again, it's not too sweet. Um, you can taste the hints of bourbon in it. And uh, it's pretty good. OK, good deal. Good deal. Now, I know you're talking about um, opening up your shop and having an indoor building. And um, I don't know if it's happening in, in Detroit, but here in North Carolina, a lot of the um, the vape shops are, are coming up. Do you see that as competition or do you think um, there is room for for vaping or a, a vape flavored cigars inside of the same arena? Is that just two different worlds? No, I think that there's definitely sense. enough enough room because it is, like you said, it's, it's two different demographic. Um, okay. Um, what I see that a lot of the vape shops around here are smoke shops that carry vape is they will also have a cigar humidor in their, um, shop. Okay. Um, I don't consider it real competition mainly because most of the time what I've found is when you go in there, they don't know what anything about the cigars. They're not cigar smokers. So, gotcha. um, I'm not, you know, you come to shade, you're going to get a full experience. You'll get educated. You're going to walk out of here feeling like, you know, something it has not been my experience right. that I've done that going to any of the vape shops, 
But again, the, the, the demographic, I think, is totally different. There might be some overlap, but for the most part, the cigar smoker is going to be, you know, someone that's that's on the older end of the spectrum in older meaning, you know, probably starting from about, you know, you might every once in a while dip down into like a 30. But mo for the most part, it's like 35 and up. Um, and it's just it's somebody who can truly appreciate it. And that knows when to kind of sit down, slow down and chill with it. Not necessarily all about what I call the rah-rah. I mean, you got some that are out there like that, that are just doing it for the show. It's a trendy thing. Right, to some people. right. But for the most part, a true cigar smoker, I find, is that person that's just laid back, chill, man or woman, um, that can truly appreciate it and just wants to sit back and and, and is, to me, very discerning. You know, they're not just going to stick in the old thing, you know, in their mouth and smoke it. They want to know about the cigar again so that they can appreciate it. So um, the vape crowd, I think, and I don't know, I haven't done any research on it, so don't quote me. But I perceive as, you know, a, a younger um, crowd. Um, and I'm sure they got some old heads that's out there vaping, too. But um, I don't right. know much about it, but I, I think there's room for both out here. Absolutely. OK, OK. Um, I, and I like how you you, you phrase that um, in regards to like like being at a cigar lounge and that just having you here and giving us this information, it feels like I'm a little bit more knowledgeable about what I'm looking for. And I'm going to go back and have to rewind this tape as well because I got the dog barking in the background. Um, but as I get out into the, the world a, a little bit more um, and entertaining people from around the world, possibly um, sooner than later. What's one of the biggest faux pas you can make if somebody's trying to look super cool at the cigar bar um, that that you can do at a cigar bar? That's kind of a I, I don't don't do that um, when, you, when you're smoking a cigar. Not not don't 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 get on me about that. Switch the sweet out and cut down the middle nope. and pull it on the tobacco. <laughs> Do what, that. What, what's like people, a faux pas that you should not make if you had a cigar bar and you're trying to look super cool? You know what? There's there's such a, a, there's a list of of cigar etiquette that you'd be surprised how many okay. people don't know about it and don't follow it. Um, wow. As far as being super cool, looking super cool, um, I think the biggest thing that people biggest misconception is that the bigger the cigar, the better. <clears throat> so you know, you get a lot wow, of you know. Okay mainly the guys that come in, yeah, you know, I'm right. looking for, you know, Stogie, I'm looking for that big da da da, -da or right. those that are coming in, you know, what's your most expensive cigar, which is to me crazy mm. because I've had some cigars that are very expensive that taste like it probably costs $3 and vice versa. Wow. I've had some very okay. inexpensive or, or moderately priced cigars that were really, really good. So definitely don't let your pr the price dictate your cigar. When it comes to the size of the cigar, um, there's some a, a bit of science, if you will, behind that. Um, mm -hmm. So a cigar is broken down into three main components, the uh, filler, the binder and the wrapper. The filler is all that tobacco that's on the inside. And that's what's giving it the fatness, basically, or what we call the right. ring gauge size. Beyond that, there's a layer that's called the binder. And that the purpose of the binder is really to hold the filler together and in place. And then that wrapper, which is that outside part, is where you're going to get most of your flavor. That filler tobacco, you get some flavor, but the most of the flavor of your tobacco is going to come from that outside wrapper part. So if you right. think about it, you got a big fat cigar with all that filler that's making it fat. You got a bunch of the filler that doesn't have a lot of the flavor. So mm, you're smoking okay. on a big old cigar, but not really, really getting a lot of the flavor of it or as much flavor as you could be getting if you selected a smaller ring gauge. So definitely okay. would tell, um, you know, everybody, you know, don't let the, the size be the determining factor. If you are really looking to um, taste and appreciate the notes of the, of the tobacco, you want to go with a smaller ring gauge cigar and quit worry about trying to look cute. Um, other than that, honorable mention, and this isn't about looking cute, but this is just an absolute no, no is you get some people that are coming to a cigar bar or somewhere where others are smoking and they want to borrow somebody's cutter, which is what this is. Right. And the first thing they do is stick the cigar in their mouth first and then go to use the cutter. Not mm. only is that disgusting because of COVID, it's just disgusting, period. Now you got just spit all on your cigar. Now you're going to try to use the cutter to cut the cigar, especially if it's a community right. cigar, you know, where. So, for example, here at the shop, we have a, a nice um cutter that sits on the counter where everybody can cut their cigar so imagine if everybody 
you know, put their cigar in their mouth right, and then went right. to use that cutter. It's absolutely uh, disgusting. So um, that's definitely a big, humongous no-no. All right, fellas, you hear that? You hear that? It's not all about the size. And stop being so disgusting putting your mouth on everything. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Now, I know you also spoke about being a historian, um, Mo. And if you can maybe give us a history, or have you heard how did um, cigars come synonymous with closing the big deals? I know we see them sometimes in the movies. Um, but do, do you know what kind of the history behind that or is there a history behind you it? You know, I, I'm sure there is. And in, in, in the world of cigars, there's so many myths, legends and all that other good stuff. You never know, you know, what is, is true. I think and it's been my experience that it's one of those things when you see someone that is truly appreciating a cigar, when you see them smoking it, they make it look so good that it makes you want to try it. Um, okay, and it, right. it, it is. It is a cool looking thing. If you got somebody that knows what they're doing, if it's a guy, it's super cool. If it's a lady that's handling her cigar, it's sexy as hell. So right, right. Um, I think it's one of those things where it's just very, um, it, 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 it can be very impressionable. You know, people see that and they want to do it. So I think with, um, you know, closing the big deal. I mean, cigars are definitely known for being, you know, celebratory things. You know, somebody has a baby there's a cigar right. someone gets married there's a cigar so it's definitely synonymous with that um but i think too you know on the golf course um i play golf if that's what you want to call it but um every time i go out it's just something about having that cigar i think for me it just helps to slow things down and and allows me to really really enjoy the day especially if the weather is great um it just cigars have a way of just slowing you down and making you appreciate where you are right there in that moment. And so, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, when it comes to golf, you know, they're, they're wanting to hobnob and rub elbows with, you know, other important right, folks. Right. And that's just where stuff is done. And so, I don't know. Cigars are, are part of some of the most important, I think, parts of people's lives, whether it's business, winning games. You know, you see the athletes when they win championships, you know, they got the stogies right. and all of that. So, yeah. Okay. Well, I, I'm not going to hold you too long. I know you want to get back out there to the cigar. So I'm going to just ask a couple questions and have you look through my, my box, my humidor box. Did I say that right? Humidor. My humidor box. See, I'm, I'm yeah. getting educated, y'all. You don't have to say box. Just say your humidor. Just your humidor. You don't need to say <laughs> my, my humidor. Don't even have to put yeah. box at the end. Nope. My humidor. Copy that. Um, when, when it comes to lighting up that cigar, um, do they have matches that are burned long enough to light one? Or is it all about having that torch lighter? I guess if you don't have that super big cigar, you may not need a torch lighter. You probably can strike up with a with a match. How do you like to, to strike up your cigars? So that, that's actually a really good question. Um, so while most people or a lot of people do use a torch, one of the things that's a um, disadvantage if you will using a torch over matches um is the fact that that torch is so let's see if i got one right here is so um it's hot so this particular torch right. is a quad torch so it has four flames coming out of there and so you're lighting okay. up that tobacco and it's super hot so you, sometimes you can char the end of your um cigar you know basically burning it so it turns black you don't necessarily want to do that um so in using a torch, you can do that. Some people use a match because they say, I've not experienced this, but they said that they can taste the difference because this has butane wow. in it, whereas that match okay. doesn't. So some people wow. do that. There's a third way to light it. So a lot of times when you buy a box of cigars that have a really thin layer of um, cedar wood in there, people take that wood and they break them into strips. And those strips are called stills. No. Okay. spills i'm sorry spills um and so what they do is they'll they might take their torch light the spill like that cedar okay. stick and then light their cigar and by using both the match and the spill um because it's not as strong and as hot of a flame as that torch right. it doesn't char the end of the cigar and again it's forcing you just to slow down and enjoy the process and so that whole process okay. of lighting your cigar is called toasting it so it's in, it's forcing you just to kind of slow down as you're toasting the cigar 
and getting right. ready for it and prepping it. And for some people, that's a whole process. It's just kind of like, it is. You, you know, your, your, your mouth wet, your, you know, everything ready for the right. cigar. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I, I love that. Well, I'm going to grab my humidor and, and see. Okay. Let's see um, what you got. Do I have some or is it just some sitting on the desk? Um, <laughs> here, here's the design. You can, you can check that Beautiful. design out and let me know how nice. that design looks. Very okay. nice. Let's see what we have inside. Is that an antique? Where'd she get that? I I don't know. It was a gift. I'm, I'm gonna have to ask now. Um, but I, I definitely was impressed with the case. But I, I don't I don't have the history behind it. Uh, it looked like I'm having trouble opening it up. I may have it upside down. Got a combination uh, lock to it. <laughs> it. It is an antique lock on here. Okay, here we go. But you know what? Hmm. That's that's not the humor door. That's the um the kids Japanese. Shut up! You know what? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I saw a dragon on there. I was like, okay, right. Hold a little on. bit of me, Cuban and Japanese. Okay. Little top here. It's the, the torch lighter that I I will not okay. be using the same way anymore. And I would say with the torch. So with with whenever you're lighting your torch, just keep in mind the tip of the flame is the hottest okay. part of the flame so you don't need to put it down in like the blue part where the flame is at the bottom right. and you don't even have to touch your cigar to the flame at all if you hold it just the right amount you know of distance away it'll light without it, the cigar itself even touching the flame that's the hottest point at the very okay. top so keep that in mind that can kind of help cut down the amount of charring of the tip of Definitely. the head of the cigar mm -hmm. okay now now here is my humidor's top okay. case here Back it up just a little bit. Is that Arturo Fuente? Look familiar? Yep. It's a little blurry on my screen, but I can see. Is that Arturo Fuente? What is that? You see Fuente anywhere yes. on there? Okay. Yes. All right. My my screen is really pixely, but okay. But well, yes. I see it. Are you wearing bifocals like like me? Man, I got about. I just went and picked up three pairs of readers just yesterday. It's a shame. <laughs> Woo. I couldn't do the bifocals thing. I tried. Now this is the one that I um they got from a, a cigar bar, and I haven't smoked this one yet. Um, and it was a cigar bar in Charlotte. Okay. Let's see if I can get the name on here. They say That's it's handmade. I can see it has it. a coffee flavor. That's um, a macanudo, absolutely. And they say so, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar by macanudo. Yep, yep. So the, the, the bourbon cigar that I talked about earlier, that's the same company, the, the macanudo bourbon. This is their coffee flavor. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. I hadn't smoked that one. Now, is that a good smoke? I hadn't smoked that one yet. It is. It's a flavored cigar. Um, so one of the things that I will tell you, if you are a coffee drinker, try drink, try yes, smoking that with coffee. You will really I enjoy will. it. Yeah. Know that you don't always have to smoke a cigar with liquor or bourbon or anything. You can do it with coffee or tea. Absolutely. Okay. And quick question again, I, I hadn't smoked that one. I've been sitting on that cigar for about three years. Is the cigar dead or how long can you sit on the cigar when you have it in the humidor? If you have, if it's being kept in the right temperature and the right level of humidity, a cigar can pretty much mm -hmm. last forever. Do you have any type of humidity in that box? Uh, no. Like, uh, no. Okay. It's then it's probably um in need of some help. <laughs> um, so what happens okay. is you in in a in a humidor, like I said, they it needs to be maintained at, at an optimal um uh, temperature and humidif uh, humidification. Uh, I was trying to see if I had. So they have these little humidity packs. Um, the most popular is, is one uh, made by a company called Boveda, B-O-V-E-D-A. And basically what that is, is okay. just a little packet that you can throw in your box to help regulate the humidity. Uh, but yeah, that's been sitting okay. in there with, for three years um, with no humidification. Yeah. So I, I need 
It's probably going to crack okay. and dry up and fall apart when you go to light it. But <laughs> wow, even with it being inside the plastic. Yeah, it, I, yeah. I think inside the plastic it has a little a little packet in there inside the plastic. The um one of those little packs. That's the bow with a pack. Is it hard as a rock? It probably is. It is hard it's, as a rock. Should, yeah, it should feel like jelly is on the inside when it's good. It, wow. It's really soft and feel like jelly. So yeah, that's so what you can try to do. I'm gonna give you the bootleg version. Uh -huh. Um get a piece of paper towel, pour some distilled okay. water on it, squeeze all of the water okay. out. Roll your paper towel up so it's like a little cylinder, kind of like the shape of the cigar. Put it inside that plastic bag on one side of the bag. Put the cigar on the other side. Don't let them touch. Close it okay. up and just kind of let it sit. Uh, and, and it's probably going to take you a couple times to do this. Like, you know, Let it sit for probably about a good week, maybe two weeks. And just go back every so often and, and try to, to you know, see how firm or hard that cigar is. That cigar, I'm sure, is very hard, isn't it? Is it? When you go to squeeze it, don't squeeze it too hard because it'll crack. But uh, no, a, a, it's still somewhat soft. Is it? It's still, it still has some give to it. Wow. Okay. I would still probably try to do that with the paper towel. Um, it give it, you know, okay. probably about a good three days, and go in and oh. check it. Mm-hmm. And uh, wow. so what, what, basically, what happens is that that cigar will absorb that moisture and that cellophane that the cigar is in. Is it in plastic? Okay. Yes, it, it's a plant based material, so it breathes in and out. So it, it will still take in that moisture through that cellophane oh, and it'll get to the cigar. Okay. Yeah. Wow. See, we are getting educated here on old school Sunday conversations. <laughs> That's what these conversations are about educating Absolutely. myself and educating the people around me. Absolutely. Um, this one right here, and this is the last one more, and I'm going to let you get back to your cigar. Okay. Um, I think it's pronounced Lacruton, Lacruton, from the Drew see. Estate. Is it Loretan? Loretan. Loretan. I believe okay. so. Like I said, my screen is pixel. It looks like, back it up some, just yes, a little bit. Yes, yes, Loretan. Now you said it, I can read it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so Loretan. that is also a flavored cigar. And Lacruton. Uh-huh. <laughs> And the, the, the reason that that name sounds so weird, Laura Tan, if you read it backwards, it says natural. Uh, wow. Okay, so that particular okay. um, cigar company Don't came look. out when they first came out with that cigar. It was called the natural, but the um, the FDA pretty much slapped them on the hand because and told them that they couldn't say that it was natural because it was tobacco and just the whole thing of giving people the perception that it's good for you, blah, blah, blah. So they right. instead of totally renaming it they just flipped the name backwards and now it's called lord okay. yeah awesome awesome well i have been educated on old school sunday conversations you know what i'm gonna have to do more i'm gonna have to bring you back after i straighten myself up i get my humidor right i make sure that i have my my humidity right inside my box i'm gonna see if i can say that cigar that i killed over the last few years <laughs> waiting on the right celebration to come along <laughs> and um I'm, I'm gonna go back and replay this at least three times so that i can find out all that i need to know about cigars and i hope my teammates out there in the world do the same thing y'all heard it first here uh give me the name of the shop one more time i'll go ahead and plug let everybody know how they can book you um if if, if they have enough capital to, to get the right experience and they're not Having that Swiss of sweet money where they want to just cut the cut the Swiss of sweet down the middle and pull all the tobacco out. Come and get that education and come and get that <laughs> real cigar teammates. <laughs> that is funny. Well, first of all, I'm gonna say to you, when we get off this call, text me your um address and I'll send you a care package to get you started with some fresh cigars. Um awesome. but, uh, Thank the, you. the shop is Shade Cigar Cafe. We're located okay. in Farmington Hills, Michigan. 27632 Middle Belt Road, Farmington Hills, Michigan. Uh, the mobile business is called Cigarden, and that's just like cigar in den, but it's one word, C-I-G-A-R-D-E-N. You can find information about both businesses on cigarden.com. I'm sorry, cigardendetroit.com. 
I have information for both businesses, information about booking, our fees for the various services that we offer. We do offer cigar rolling demonstrations. Um, so definitely check us out there. Um, if you're on social media, check us out under Sh Shade Cigar Cafe on Facebook and IG. And on Facebook for Cigarden is just Cigarden. On IG is Cigarden Detroit. Definitely invite you to go in, uh, especially on the Facebook side, because you can post more photos. Scroll through our photos, see some of the cool things we've been doing for the past several years. Um, we have posts about some of those great events um, that I talked about that are going to be on there. And definitely follow us so that you know when they're coming up, so that hopefully those that are local here or those that want to fly into town can come and join us at these events. I appreciate the time. Awesome, awesome. I thank you so much. It's been a blessing. I've, I've been educated. Um, I'm sure this is going to get a, a lot of likes and people will be replaying it so they can get educated about the cigars because it's one thing for them to look so good, but to have that extra knowledge that you need in order to talk intelligently about the cigars is another thing. And I thank you for educating us on this old school Sunday conversation here, uh, Mo. I hope you have a blessed rest of the day and wish you more and more success. Thank you. Love you, man. All right. Love you too. Peace. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.